A few weeks later, ATSIC advised me, we'd reported this to ATSIC, that they wouldn't take any action on the, on the misconduct. When a receiver is sent into a farm, and this is post GFC, does that receiver have the right to sell the grain on that property if, that, if the receiver or the, those, uh, the bank does not have a lien on that grain? I can't answer that question right now, Senator. I'm well, taking on notes. We put this to, I believe Mr Marcellus is no longer with you. Mm. I put this to Mr Marcellus a few weeks ago, mm. but I never got a reply. Well, I'm very happy to chase that up as a, a matter of Please do, of and please urgency. come back to my office with us. With one of the Bank West problems, a receiver was sent into a hotel, sold up two hotels. When uh, the bank was paid in full and the receiver was paid in full, there was a million dollars left over. But the bank would not give the million dollars back to the bloke who owned the pubs because that bloke was actually suing Bank West. The bank said they're going to keep the million dollars to pay their legal fees up against him who was suing them. I mean, is that acceptable practice? And the receiver remained in there when everyone was paid, uh, each month taking storage fees, etc. When someone is cleaned up and, and everyone's got their money, shouldn't any be left to go back to the owner of the assets when all creditors are paid and the receiver leave the operation? Well, I, I understand the question you're asking, Senator, but I, I, I'm not in a position to comment on that particular matter. I put it to Mr Marcellus, he said he'd get back, get back to me in two days, but I never heard from him again. Okay. Uh, he frustrates me enormously. I've asked to meet with your boss, Mr Medcraft, but he won't meet with me. At least Mr Deloitte has to come to my office where we could go through issues. Unconscionable conduct. You're responsible for that behaviour when it comes to the banking system? You the oversight of unconscionable conduct? Yes. Etc. But I think you need to actually step out a bit and uh, try and help pursue some of these wrongdoings to bring a bit of justice around the nation. Pay attention to Mr Jim Neal's submission in this uh, inquiry. But his $3.8 or $4 million property was sold for $635,000 and they valued it afterwards at $3.8 million. Uh, there'll be some questions asked there. Uh, but the point is this, if they want to pursue that through the courts, which they have the right to do, they don't have any money. We all know what it costs to go to court. How can these people ever seek any justice without any money? Under the system, I mean, this is, is ASIC prepared to look at these situations if I bring them to your attention? Um, Although it's difficult to comment when there are a set of different circumstances there, but we're happy to look at any information you want to present to us, Senator. Who do I deal with now at your office that Mr Marcellus has gone? Uh, I'll volunteer Mr Matthew Abbott uh, for that, um, but I'm happy to... That'll be good. All right. Is he the go-to man for me as well? Uh, in the first instance, uh, yes, Senator, I think uh, we will funnel it through, uh, 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 through Matthew. Have you undertaken an investigation into various allegations that Bank West customers with commercial loans have been treated unfairly since Bank West was acquired by the Commonwealth Bank? Uh, we have received a small number of complaints relating to Bankwest mm -hmm. and the, um, the matters that have sort of been raised publicly in, in recent times. ASIC ha has not received any evidence to suggest some sort of systemic misconduct by, by Bankwest in, in relation to these matters. But as we've received uh, four complaints. Four complaints. And have you met with any of the uh, 
the submitters uh, who have been to this inquiry or their representatives groups, representative groups such as the Unhappy Banking Group, headed by Jeff Shannon. Uh, my understanding is we have received complaints from some of those individuals as to whether we've met with them directly, I would have to, to check. Notice, if you would do that. Uh, I would have to check and as to the nature the of our communication the with them. If yep. you could give a list of the names and the individuals and the numbers. Do, does ASSET consider that the allegations of various kinds could uh, indicate a potential breach of the unconscionable conduct provisions of the ASSET Act, Act or other legislation that ASIC administers. You've limited it somewhat by what you said earlier in terms uh, of your look, purvey. The matters that we've seen to date uh, do not at, at this stage uh, suggest to us um, that pursuing an unconscionable conduct case would be appropriate. Uh, Victor Sito submitted that he was issued a notice of demand which required $21 million to be repaid within 24 hours. Would ASIC uh, be of the view that demanding a borrower to refinance their facility within 24 hours is reasonable or unreasonable? Uh, look, uh, again, on the face of it, that seems a, a tough call, but I don't know whether there had been a series of previous requests um, over what period of time uh, and therefore where those negotiations were up to. So again, it's, it's a little hard to, to comment without knowing more details about the facts of the case. Would, would, if that was put to you, would, you, would that raise your interest and say, I want to know, well, ASIC wants to know more about this? Uh, again, we're, we are very much prepared to hear about uh, these matters. In relation to some of these cases, uh, it's, it's clear even from the amounts of money that you're, you're talking about that some of them would not fall under the consumer credit protection laws because they're in the, the business space. Uh, so he would not have uh, the, the powers under that legislation to look at it. Very much prepared to, to consider any evidence you want to put to us. No, I'm sure you are. But the last matter I want to raise with you is that a number of submitters referred to having to sign a deed of forbearance after running into problems with Bank West. The deed included a confidentiality clause. Uh, in some cases, the only way the negotiating position of the borrower can be strengthened is through public exposure of the situation, such as through the media. And one must question whether a, a, confi a confidentiality clause clause is appropriate. Would you like to comment on those points, please? Look, I think it would be more appropriate to respond to some of that on, on notice rather than off the cuff around the, those We'd particular We'd quite like to hear your point of view because it's not as though you're going to look up records or pull out figures or we'd just like to hear your general views on these sort of issues. Uh, again, in, in these sorts of situations, um, lenders and borrowers enter into arrangements to, if you like, uh, resolve uh, outstanding issues. Uh, in, in some cases, my understanding is they do involve um, uh, confidentiality agreements. Um, uh, so I'm not sure that that's unique to this circumstance. Ultimately, these are commercial terms at one level, and ASIC's not in there trying to dictate how those commercial terms are, are arrived at. Uh, so beyond that, I think I'll restrain myself from commenting further. Um, could could com confidentiality clauses not be used to disguise or cover unconscionable conduct, however? Well, if, if we saw evidence of confidentiality clauses being used to hide uh, misconduct or um, uh, actions that were in breach of the law, uh, I don't think ASIC would look very favourably upon that at all. Thank you. If, if I was a receiver and a house was worth $3 million and I had a mate down the road at Plenty Master said, listen, I'll sell you this house for 300000 
We won't put it to auction. We'll just bypass any looking for market value. What action would you take on me? Look, the, it would depend again on the circumstances in, in each case, well, clearly Senator. Breach the so, act. Um, you know, we, we can take action against the receiver for a breach That's of 428. That's what I'm asking. What action can, would you um, take? Uh, we've got remedies, there's civil remedies um, uh, available to us, uh, but uh, it's. It, actually not an area where we receive large numbers of complaints around seriously... I gave an example, conduct. Mr Kell. Now it's as clear as mud. Thanks for the answer. Mr Kell, you were talking about uh, when businesses get into trouble, they have conversations which aren't particularly pleasant with their financiers. The allegations here are that the trouble that the businesses have got themselves into are solely arising out of the bank acting on uh, the terms of the agreement uh, with businesses that were otherwise not in trouble. And so, so that's just... I, I understand yeah. that those are some of the allegations yeah. that have been put forward, but thank you, okay. Chair, for no, clarifying you. that issue. I mean, when you say you carefully consider matters that come to ASIC in way of complaints, mm. I have a lot of problems with that, Mr Kerr. Mm. For four years, complaints went into your office about the infamous Stuart Arif, mm. the way he robbed people, and now he's in jail where he belongs. And the only reason he acted then was because it went to the media. Mm. 